Hello everyone and welcome. We are in the brand new Honda Civic Type R and I want to show you something. We're in a straight line, 306 horsepower going in the front wheels. Not touching the steering wheel except to adjust. No torque steer you can see there. Look at that. That's incredible. <laughs> Honda has worked very hard to eliminate the torque steer from this car, and it's very apparent. I was out on the track earlier today driving it, and I didn't feel any, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to wait till I'm on a street and just punch it when I'm in a straight line, and nothing happens. It's beautiful. You don't have torque steer in a front-wheel drive car with 306 horsepower. So let's talk a little bit about the numbers and then get into how they did that with the front axle. This car weighs 3,117 pounds. You'll notice that's significantly lighter than the competition, whether that's the STI, about 200 pounds lighter, the Golf R, about 200 pounds lighter, or the Focus RS, about 300 some pounds lighter. From the engine, you've got 306 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, and you've got peak torque of 295 pound-feet from 2,500 RPM all the way to 4,500 RPM. And once you get to that 4,500 RPM, it doesn't taper off too quickly. It actually stays, uh, you know, it's a gradual decline in torque as peak uh, power comes on at 6,500 RPM. So you've got good power across the entire rev range, which is quite nice. And you'll notice that's more power than the STI, that's more torque than the STI, same story with the Golf R, all in a car that weighs less than both of them. Additionally, because it's not all-wheel drive, you're going to get more power to the ground because you're going to have less losses through the drivetrain. So another benefit. So significantly more power, much better power to weight ratio than those other cars, and it really does show. So you've got a slightly heavier or a slightly higher power to weight than the Focus RS. It's about 10.2 to 1 in this versus 9.8 to 1 in the Focus RS, and you're looking at about 11 to 1 in the Golf R and the STI. Uh, but you know that's again that's power from the engine this is power at the wheel so it might be really close actually to the Focus RS once you take into consideration that it's going to have more losses through the drivetrain. Now the engine is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder and unlike the Civic SI which just has variable uh, cam timing on both the intake and the exhaust this also has variable cam timing on the intake and exhaust except you do have VTEC. Now unfortunately it's just on the exhaust, so at those higher RPMs you'll get a higher cam profile to allow forcing out more air from the exhaust. You won't have that you know, switch over cam profile, uh, which you traditionally have had with the older versions of VTEC, where you hear that louder profile and you get more intake. Because it's turbocharged, you really don't need that additional profile. Um, it's able to force that air in, and you know they're able to have one setting that works well for the entire rev range. So let's kind of move on and talk through some of these systems. As far as the shifting, first of all, you may have just heard it blip up. It does have downshift rev matching. You can turn it off and do your own heel toe if you would like, but the downshift rev matching is actually very good. Um, you do have a little bit of rev hang. I wouldn't say it's as bad as the Civic Si, uh, but it is noticeable. Uh, but the downshift rev matching works very well. And you know, it's more aggressive actually. There's three different modes here. So you've got comfort, sport, and plus R and if you put it into plus R mode it gets a bit more aggressive with the acceleration when you do downshift uh, so it'll happen even quicker and it's a fun thing to have you know I was playing with it on the track and it's quite enjoyable to not have to you know have the pressure of needing to heel toe without upsetting uh, the balance of the car and just let the car do it I'm not that talented of a driver and it's gonna do much better than I will on my own trying to heel toe so it's nice to have that feature especially when you're at an unfamiliar track uh, and just kind of rolling through the gears and letting it worry about you know what the exact speed is it needs to match that RPM so really fun the shifter is fantastic I drive an s2000 and it does remind me a bit of that S2000 because it's real short, very crisp, very direct throws uh, that I really like. It has an amazing feel to it. There's no sloppiness in it. Um, it's a nice rigid system, good positive feedback as you put it into each gear. Really love the shifter in this. Good story with the clutch as well. You know, it uses the whole range of travel as you're pulling that clutch out. Uh, you don't really feel much vibration through that clutch pedal, and it's a simple car to drive. Um, and with the addition of rev matching, you know, it makes it so anybody can go out there and throw it into a corner hard and, you know, not worry about rev matching. So that's a nice feature to have. Great brakes. It's got 13.8-inch Brembo's up front. 
Uh, if you're, you know, studying your stats, you'll notice that that's the exact same as the Focus RS, which is significantly heavier, and it has larger rear brakes than the Focus RS. So bigger up front than both the STI and the Golf are, and same size up front as the RS, even though this car weighs significantly less. So we were thrashing it out on the track for a good while, um, four different, four or five different waves of journalists going through this car back to back to back, and I didn't experience any issues with the brakes. So the brakes can really handle going out on a track, you know, having some fun with it, putting a ton of heat in them, and they've got good cooling. So a great system from Brembo up front, uh, plenty of power in those brakes, and no worry about fade. The brake pedal itself, too, also pretty good. You know, not a whole lot of travel to it, which I do like before you get into heavy braking. Uh, and that's also nice for heel toe if you want to do it yourself, you know, turn the system off. Um, and it gives you the ability to kind of roll over under that throttle. So I do like that there's not too much travel in the brake pedal itself. The throttle, you know, this is a turbocharged engine, so you don't get the exact precision like you do with naturally aspirated engines because you wait for that turbo to build up a bit. That's said the throttle does feel really good and you don't have the noticeable you know turbo lag like you do in the SI it's quicker to get on it and you also have a limited slip differential up front so one of the things that I found interesting out on the track was hardly any understeer you know this car is front wheel drive and we were actually talking with the chief engineer you know why front wheel drive and really it comes down to heritage he said, the chief engineer said they did look into it when they were initially planning this vehicle, uh, but the heritage of this car is a front, front, you know, front engine, front wheel drive. That's what it's always been, so there was no reason to change that. And they've really proved that it can work with this car. You know, I don't get into too many front wheel drive cars that I truly enjoy. I used to have an old Integra, and, and it was a lot of fun, and honestly, this thing is, is way more fun. Uh, the, the front wheel drive does work in this car, and, and what I was saying to the guys out at the track while we we were driving is that you know if you weren't told that it was front wheel drive you wouldn't immediately know you'd eventually figure it out through understeer if you gave it too much power in a corner uh, but you wouldn't immediately figure it out it does a really nice job of putting the power down and not just pushing um, and I think a lot of that too has to do with the fact that you don't feel the torque steer you don't feel that at all and so there's few indications that you're in this you know high horsepower front wheel drive vehicle it's really well behaved on the track. You can even get a little bit of oversteer if you come into a corner, you know, lift off the throttle and kind of let the tail come out a bit. You know, nothing too crazy, but it does it does actually let you play with it a little bit, which is fun. And, and it's also surprising for a front wheel drive car. So how have they fixed this torque steer? Well, part of what they did was they have large wheels. So this has larger wheels than some of the competitors, eight and a half inches wide. And by having that large wheel, you can push out the brakes. Now, when you push out the brakes, you can put uh, what they call a dual strut, dual axis strut. And so the axis of rotation from the steering axis is different from the axis that the strut moves up and down on. And by separating that, what you're trying to do is get the axis that the steering rotates very close to the center of where the tire rotates. And if you can do that, which they did by pushing everything out and getting that steering axis well into that wheel so that you can get it right over the center axis, if you do that well, you can pretty much eliminate torque steer. And that's what they've done. So very cool uh, that you can have that much power in a car like this and do it. And, you know, it's genuinely fun. It's quick. You feel all that power. <laughs> Aerodynamically, they've done some really cool stuff with this vehicle. So starting at the front of the car, you'll notice a front mount intercooler in the lower opening, significantly larger than you'll find on the Civic Si for improved performance. In the center you have an opening to feed the radiator, and on the hood itself there's a scoop to feed cool air into the engine bay, but it also helps to reduce drag as well. Now they do have some blocked out vents on both the front and rear, which I find a bit tacky, but as we're about to discuss, the overall aero story is well designed and quite functional. On the lower portions of the front bumpers at each side, there are cooling ducts to feed fresh air to the brakes. You also have side vents on the front bumper to create an air curtain around the front tires, helping to prevent the front tires from disrupting airflow along the side of the car. You also have a front splitter and winglets to help create downforce on the front end. Along the sides of the car, you'll notice rocker panels that step out with lower skirts. The flared out skirts help with downforce and preventing high pressure air from entering below the car. 
There's a kick up winglet at the front of the rear wheel to direct air over the wheels and create an air curtain as well as contributing to downforce. Finally, on top of the car, you'll notice vortex generators which are used to pull the airflow downward and keep the flow attached to increase the usefulness of the rear wing, ultimately creating more downforce. Along with the massive wing, underneath the car is generally quite flat with a belly plan in place to reduce lift and improve aerodynamic efficiency. As far as the steering itself, it's actually got a pretty light weight to it and the ratio is a little taller than in the Civic Si. Now the reason they did that is because this can reach higher top speeds and they want it to be stable and precise at those top speeds, uh, so they increased the steering ratio a little bit. Uh, you know, a good amount of effort I'd say once you get mid-corner, but overall, you know, the steering, what I like about it most is that there's a complete lack of torque steer. I wouldn't say there's necessarily a ton of feedback. They do use the same dual pinion system, same thing used in the NSX as well as the Civic Si, where, you know, you don't have the electric motor in the steering column and so it helps improve feedback. I would definitely say it's an improvement over the SI uh, and it doesn't feel too bad actually. You can feel you know the vibrations from the road, uh, some of the, the cornering characteristics from the tire. So an improvement over the SI for sure. Uh, a little light weighted I would say but you know I really don't have much to complain about with the steering uh, whereas I, I didn't feel quite as connected in the SI. As far as the interior it's actually quite nice. You've got a good size touchscreen here, standard navigation, you You've got uh, standard Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. There's one car here. All you're doing is picking color, and that's what's cool about it. Priced at $33,900 $33, before destination charges, so it's about $2,000 cheaper than both the STI and the Focus RS, about $5,000 cheaper than the Golf R, so, you know, some serious savings in money, and you've got more power than some of those, so, you know, it's a real performance heavy hitter for the price that you're paying, and, you know, I think the, the biggest deterrent for some people might be the fact that it's front-wheel drive, but honestly, it feels great. Whether it's on the track, whether it's on the road, in both circumstances, it feels fantastic. As far as, you know, this interior, really nice leather uh, stitch steering wheel. You've got good side bolsterings here. For me, I'm a little too narrow for the car, but I think I'm a little too narrow overall. And so for most people, these are probably going to hold you really well. For me, out on the track, I was sliding around a little bit. Decent for my legs, uh, but for my back, kind of move around a bit. But I think, you know, for most people, it's going to be a nice fit um, and keep you snug while you're cornering hard. Another thing I have liked about the interior versus the SI, when I was wearing a helmet on the track in the SI, my head was pressed right up against the roof. And in this car, I could wear a helmet, not have any trouble uh, with clearance with my head against the roof. So I like that you've got more headroom in this hatch. It's got that taller profile to allow for taller drivers. I'm 6'1 and fit in here just fine. You also get a 12-speaker audio system standard in this. So, you know, finally, uh, a standard base model car is coming with amazing audio. I was uh, cranking up the tunes, just pulled off on the side of the road and listening to it. Sounds great. Um, so it's nice to have that in a base model car. You know, there's only one out there, and they just give you all the amenities. I like that about it. Only offered with the manual transmission. My biggest gripe uh, with this car really comes down to the parking brake. You've got an electronic parking brake, which I absolutely hate. You never know whether it's going on or off. It's different in different cars. And in a manual transmission car, you should always have the ability to hold a handbrake, keep you on a hill, you know, put it in gear as a hill assist. This, of course, has hill assist, uh, but you might want to be able to do it yourself. You might also want to chuck it into a corner and yank the handbrake. This car can slide fairly well. We saw someone on the track getting a little four-wheel drift on, uh, which was pretty interesting to see. And, you know, you can't do that when you don't have a parking brake as easily. You can just throw it into the corner and, you know, do your best. The guy who was doing it was one of the instructors, a professional driver. Um, and, you know, I just, I think the ability, it's mechanical, it's simple, it's good, everyone likes it. I don't know why we got rid of it. It's its unfortunate to move to electric park brakes. I don't really think there's any benefit, and I think there are some negatives to it. As far as visibility, it's actually great. Whether you're looking to the sides, out the front, out the back, you don't even see the rear wing. They've actually lifted it above that uh, rear hatch. So when you're looking through the rear mirror, I don't see the wing at all. I just have a clear view of what's behind me. So it's nice that you've got good visibility all with a functional, you know, large rear wing. Now, I'm probably going to upset some uh, STI fanboys here, but I used to own a 2014 Subaru WRX STI. 
And the fact of the matter is that car has become quite dated. When I bought it in 2014, it was already about 10 years old. Um, and so now it's even older. And, you know, the engine just hasn't kept up. This is legitimately here I'm going to say it, more fun to drive than the Subaru STI, the 2014 version, which I owned. Reason being, you've got way more usable torque. It has a nice wide band of a torque curve, whereas in the STI, you had to wait till 4,000 RPM before you were having any fun, and then it died immediately at 6,000 RPM, so you had a pretty narrow band. This has a much wider range of usable, fun power. Uh, also, the shifter is just fantastic, and the fact that it has rev matching doesn't hurt, but really the shift feel in this car is phenomenal, and I love that about it. Good aggressive gearing. The STI does have good aggressive gearing, uh, but overall, less weight, more torque, and you know, better shifting feel, uh, much better usable power range. All of these result in a car that's more fun to drive. Is it as capable off-road? Is it as capable in the snow? Of course not. It doesn't have that sophisticated all-wheel drive system. But I bet this thing can still do pretty well considering it's got most of the weight on that front axle uh, because of the engine up there and it's got a helical limited slip differential. But this does super well on the track. Ton of fun. Um, it's not quite as heavy and it just has a, a more playful characteristic to it than that STI does and to me it's just been a ton of fun to drive I mean this thing really pulls <laughs> so is it worthy of that type R name you know that one of the best front wheel drive cars out there the Integra type R absolutely it is worthy of that name it has been a ton of fun driving I have quite enjoyed it it's cool to see you know all of the different engineering features that have gone into this and really come together in one cohesive package that's you know it's it's just fun at the end of the day it's been a good comfortable car to drive for you know a few hours out on the road uh, you've got different settings with the suspension so it's an adaptive suspension you can raise that damping force if you put it in the R mode uh, versus you know comfort and sport and so those different settings actually do make a difference in how the car feels how it rides stays more flat uh, the car overall stays very flat I noticed in the Civic Si there wasn't much body roll uh, with this probably even less um, and so you know a nice flat platform nimble playful I have quite enjoyed it uh, if you guys have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below thanks for watching and we will finish things off with some beautiful turbo sounds from the engine